All right, hi everybody. Uh, today's lesson, we're going to talk about average rate of change, but specifically how average rate of change can give us more descriptive understanding of function behavior. Uh, to begin with, I want to show you this graph. In this graph, we see three different functions. All three of these functions have one thing in common, and that is as the x values go up, so too do the y values. All three of these are considered increasing functions because the functions are going uphill. However, when we look at the green function, what we see is that hill is getting steeper and steeper and steeper. And what that means is, as this function's increasing, its rate of increase is gonna go faster and faster and faster. So what we say is, the green function increases at an increasing rate because we're going faster as we increase. On the other hand, this purple function is also increasing its y values, but the change in y values is constant. So we would say that in the purple function, the y values are increasing at a constant rate. In contrast that with the black function here, uh, that function is still increasing as well, always going up. However, we were going up very fast in the beginning and very slow later on, so we would say the black function increases at a decreasing rate. The black function slows down as it increases, the purple function stays at a constant rate as it increases, and the green function speeds up as it increases. So we have increase at an increasing rate, increase at a constant rate, or increase at a decreasing rate. Now, functions can also decrease as we go. In other words, as x goes up, y's go down. So all three of these functions are, in fact, decreasing functions. However, the purple function shows decrease at a constant rate. The green function shows decrease at a decreasing rate. What do I mean? Well, first we were decreasing very rapidly, fast, and then we were decreasing very slowly. So we have a rate that is getting decreased. We are slowing down as we continue to progress. Contrast that with the black, we are going slowly and then we're going very quickly. So in the black case, the function is decreasing at an increasing rate from slow to fast. So that's uh, a lot of language to get used to, but basically what I first answer is always, is the function going uphill or downhill? If the function is going downhill, it's a decreasing function. If the function is going uphill, it's an increasing function. And then I look at the curvature. If we scoop so that we're going steeper, that means the rate is going faster. If we scoop downwards, that means we're going slower. And if we stay straight, that means we have a constant rate. Hey, that rhymes. All right, so um, what we uh, have as an ultimate goal here is to uh, use this concept to help us describe the behavior of a specific function. In the first case, um, I have uh, pounds per square inch of atmospheric pounds per square inch of atmospheric pressure, <clears throat> and it's a function of your miles in altitude. So as you increase your miles of altitude, uh, it's going to decrease uh, the amount of atmospheric pressure because of the thinner density of the atmosphere. So I was asked to calculate the average rate of change from zero to two miles, and then again from eight to 10 miles, and then use that to get a good description of the relationship between altitude and atmospheric pressure. This is what your work would look like. I'm going to go through this quickly. Please keep in mind that all these notes are available for you on Google Classroom. Um, but just in general, I'm going to produce a graph, and I want to make sure that that graph actually shows um, the interesting information. I know in my work I saw that I had to go all the way up to 10 miles, so I made sure my, ra my graph went up to 10 miles and then a little bit more so I have some room to breathe. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the specific rates that were asked for from 0 to 2 miles. Uh, I use my average rate of change algorithm, and I find that we have a decrease of 2 pounds per square inch approximately for every mile increase in uh, altitude. So that's represented here. 2 miles increase, 4.2 drop in atmospheric pressure. Um, and so that's the first piece. Second piece, 8 to 10 miles. Find P of 10 minus P of 8 over 10 minus 8, and that yields a rate of negative 0.54 psi per mile. So in both cases, we should make sure the rates are negative because, in fact, the function is going downhill, so we have negative rates. But in this case, it's negative and fast, relatively speaking, because this is negative and slow. So what I see is the atmospheric pressure decreases as we increase our altitude, but at a decreasing rate. Faster early on, slower later on. So here's how I write my answer. I start with the function variable relationship. Atmospheric pressure is a function of height above sea level in miles. Next, I talk about what happens to the pressure as height increases. As height increases, the pressure from the atmosphere decreases. And then I say how. So uh, is the function decreasing or increasing? You can answer that question first. And then you say, how is it decreasing? Is it a decreasing at a constant rate, an increasing rate, or a decreasing rate? So once again, I use these here to say fast at first, slower later on. So the rate is slowing down or decreasing. So function goes downhill, and the rate 
slows down means we are decreasing at a decreasing rate. Now, to make sure that I know the author knows what I mean when I say decreases at a decreasing rate, I say, for example, the pressure drops over 2 PSI for each mile increase in the first two miles, but only about a half mile or a pound per square inch in each mile from 8 to 10. So um, three parts to your answer is then basically you're going to say, uh, tell me the, the variable relationship, tell me what happens to the function and how, and then use your data that you calculated, the rates that you calculated to help support that answer. Now, in some cases, there's a lot going on, and it could become challenging, so I just wanted to show you another example um, just for the basics. Um, we can skip to number three from that same problem set, uh, which reads, it might be harder to read this, but we have a function telling us the monthly sales of a video game as a function of the uh, charge, what we charge for the rental. X is the cost in dollars, and F is the monthly sales in thousands. Uh, so it asks me to make a graph over $50. Um, I used Desmos to get that one, and uh, I just changed this function here and changed my boundaries. And I even got the rate calculated here, so I can see the rate should be 0.4 or 2 fifths, and then I'll just put that into context. For setting up my average rate of change, I use this formula every time, but I also wanted to demonstrate that I know where f of 5 comes from. So I put 5 in for x, and I end up with $8,000. I put 10 in for x. Well, there I just used the computer to do that, uh, since I already proved I know how to get the answer if I didn't have a computer. Nonetheless, as I proceed with my average rate of change, I get $0.4,000 per dollar increase. Uh, notice again this said 0.4 right here. I had to make sure I caught that thousands of dollars per dollar increase. Instead of 0.4 thousand dollars per dollar increase, you could say $400 per dollar increase, which means every time I raise the price a dollar from $5 to $10, I should expect to make an additional $400 more in revenue. Part C asked for the average rate of change from $15 to $25. I do the same thing. I end up with a negative rate, which means we're losing money, and that means we're losing about $233 for every $1 increase over that $5 interval, or 10, I mean. So um, there is a lot more going on than just these two rates, but I was hoping that uh, when you look at this, you can say, all right, well, uh, we have some portion of the graph where the revenue is increasing, and we have another portion of the graph where the revenue is decreasing. So when I'm asked to describe this function, I'm going to have to be a little bit more clear about what's going on. That's why this particular critique uh, or this description is flawed. It says sales is a function of price. Well, I'll agree that's true. We could be a little bit more specific. Uh, but then it says sales increase at an increasing rate at first. That part about the increasing rate, I disagree. See how it's slowing down? So as the uh, revenue increases, we're going to be at a decreasing rate at first. And then it says it. I should say revenue goes down at an increasing rate. That's also not exactly true. Originally, the revenue starts to drop at an increasing rate, but mostly we have a decreasing rate here. So here's how I answer the description. I'm, I'm going to write a better description than the one here. Start with monthly sales as a function of the rental charge rather than price and being more specific. And then I say as price increases up to $10, revenue increases but at a decreasing rate. Now, I only had one calculation from uh, 5 to uh, Ten dollars. That was the only calculation I had. So I went back to my uh, my little Desmos thing, which is right here. Um, you can actually calculate the average rate of change from zero to five, and it says it's one point six. Um, and then we can calculate another average rate of change from say ten to uh, twenty, or from twenty to thirty and we get different rates every time. So you can use this to generate more change rates, and you don't have to show all of your calculations. You just have to show me uh, what happens. So I go right here, and I say, uh, as the price increases up to $10, the revenue increases, but at a decreasing rate. Quick little statement to show that I know what that means. From 0 to 5, we end up with uh, $1.6,000 per dollar increase, but from 5 to 10, it's only $400 per dollar increase. So uh, we're still increasing, but by less as we get closer to $10. Then I say, after the $10, the revenue starts to de drop mostly at a decreasing rate. For example, from $15 to $25, we were losing $233 per dollar increase, and from $25 to $30, we were losing $180 per dollar increase. So we are still losing revenue, but we're losing revenue by less and less as we raise our price beyond $10.
so this is a complete description. It has three parts. The function relationship, does the function go up or down, and how? At an increasing rate or a decreasing rate or both, or some combination. So um, hopefully with these examples, you should be able to complete the work that I asked you to do for homework. If you have any questions, hit me up by the email. Thank you.